everyone, it's Carol here. Welcome back, welcome back. Uh, today is another Tuesday Techniques video. I've already uploaded one for today, which was an extra one, a special one, because that related to the live that I did on Sunday, where I was demonstrating how to do crackle paint uh, using PVA glue. So um, it didn't work out properly on Sunday as per usual in a live video. Uh, so I wanted to demonstrate using a variety of different glues on how you can make these um, crackle effects and also which ones worked and which ones didn't. Uh, but this was the tag that I ended up making in the end using one of the crackled pieces which is going to go well in my royal jubilee journal so that will need to be entered into this book and this is the book that i first talked about in the tuesday techniques that i'm going to keep samples of so i need to add the crackle medium pieces that i've done as my samples and add some to my front cover and then this video is showing a technique that I have shown before a long time ago, but I'm going to revisit it because I think it will come in handy again for those that are doing the Royal Journal, but also for any other time as well. It just gives you a slightly different look to a page that you can add to a journal. So let's get down to it. Now, these are the papers that I'm on about creating and they've been created with this piece of textured wallpaper, which I'll show you a close up of in a minute. But it just gives you a pretty background pattern to have something a little bit different as a journal page. And I've done it with some doilies as well because not everyone likes to do the coffee dyeing. And so this is just a slightly different alternative to that. And I'm also going to show you how to make these metallic effect ones as well using the same technique. So what I've got in front of me here is a piece of what we call here in the UK Anaglypta wallpaper. Uh, it might be known as textured wallpaper elsewhere. And as you can see from here, this is where I've done uh, previous dyeing in the past. But I'll show you a close up of the wallpaper itself. It's very highly textured. And with it being wallpaper, it's a little bit more robust. So it allows us to do what I'm going to demonstrate to you today. The other thing that you're going to need is either already pre-dyed coffee dyed papers or just plain white photocopier paper it's not a special paper it's just your bog standard dead cheap plain white photocopier paper all right so we're going to need those and we're also going to need some coffee mixed with water a big paintbrush a spoon and a cup to mix all of that into. So like any coffee dyed papers, it's up to you how strong you make this coffee. Obviously the stronger you make it, the darker the print is going to be. So I'm going to add some water to that. And this is warm water. To help to dissolve the coffee a lot quicker. Then I'm going to give it a bit of a stir to help to dissolve the coffee. Now, when you first do this, you kind of have to prime the wallpaper a little bit. And what I mean by that is that you need to just go over it maybe a few times with your mixture before it will actually start printing properly. So you may need to sort of discard the first few pieces that you do. Now, underneath this wallpaper, I have actually got some protective paper as well, because ultimately it will seep through the wallpaper a bit. OK, so let's paint some of this on. And as I say, I'm not expecting the first couple of prints to kind of work. Because the paper will absorb some of the coffee. Now, I'm not letting the wallpaper swim in coffee but I need to make sure that there's enough on there that 
that I'm going to get a decent imprint and you will see it start to soak into the wallpaper. Now there's no reason why you couldn't do this on index cards or journaling cards, you know, try it on all sorts of different um, papers and, and what have you. Okay, so as I say, I'm not expecting this first print to print nice and neat. And then we just sit that on top and press it over the top. And you'll start to see it come through to this side. When you start to see it come through, that's the time to sort of lift it off. And that's the impression that you end up getting. And you'll end up with quite a stack of these because it's so quick. So you need to make yourself plenty of room to be able to store all these pages. And as I say, we're not putting a massive amount on because we want really the coffee to sit on the raised part of the pattern. So just sit that on top and press. And as you can see, it's starting to show through then you know it's time to lift it up and off. So I can see that's starting to show through now. So now's the time to lift it up and off. So that's it on plain white paper. Let's do a couple on pre-coffee dyed. it a nice coat of coffee again then sit the coffee dyed paper on top and again once you start to see it coming through you kind of know that it's ready to lift it off. And that's the effect that you get there. So I'll just show you the difference between the two. So that was on the white paper and that was on the coffee dyed paper. So how simple is that? So what I have now is a selection of sprays. You can use whatever sprays you have to hand. I personally like the metallic sprays where they give a pearlescent kind of effect. I'm not a glittery girl, but I do like um, shimmer. So I've got here some Cosmic Shimmer Mist, some Ink Spray Mist and some Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist. And basically, we're going to do exactly the same thing, but this time we're going to spray it onto the wallpaper. And what you need to do is all the mica collects at the bottom of the bottle, so don't forget to give it a good shake and a good tap to get it all to mix in nicely with the rest of the liquid so that it comes out with that lovely metallic spray. Now, you might need to think about um, your surroundings and where you're spraying because obviously you can get a little bit exuberant sometimes and it will go everywhere where you don't want it to go so you might want to have a little bit of a splat box um, I haven't got one here for, because I'm filming but uh, I'm just trying to decide what colours to do um, but I know sort of how these kind of work and I'm going to spray several colours on all at the same time so that they sort of mix and blend together and try and get those places where I haven't sprayed anything and then again I'm just using normal white photocopier paper and placing that on top and pressing 
and again the image will start to show through you might want to wear some gloves as well again I'm not bothering and that's the kind of effect that you then end up with and again you need plenty of space because you're going to produce loads of these and you're going to want somewhere to put them so that they dry off so I'm just going to spray some other colours directly on top so we'll go with a bit of purple a bit of teal am I? no that one doesn't want to work okay was working a minute ago okay bit of purple and a bit of pink oh that's bright pink and let's put a bit of that tattered uh yeah tattered angel on as well let's see what we come up with and that's the exciting thing about this you never know what it's going to really look like until you've printed it all off But this is a lot quicker than coffee dyeing your paper and then uh, putting it in the oven. And of course the other thing is, is that you could put this through the photocopier, through your printer, and print on this side of it. So then you have this pattern on the other side. So as you can see, you can create some great effects with it. So let's just try it on some coffee dyed paper. We'll try a little bit of a different color. So we've got the purple. And the green. And let's try some of the gold. Purple, green and gold on coffee dyed paper press and you can see here look I've put too much ink on that part there but that's all right just forms a nice little bit of a pattern on the back and that's what I've then ended up with on the coffee dyed paper so that's my wallpaper technique I'm going to set up now for the next one that I want to show you, which again is something that's really very, very quick to do. So I'll see you back here in a minute. Many of us have seen this technique where you can use lace and plastic uh, lace placemats to create your own coffee dyed papers to give a lacy effect. And a, a lovely lady whom I'm so sorry, but I can't remember who it was. Uh, she sent me some of her coffee lace dyed paper um, and I've been holding on to it and hoarding it for ages uh, if not a few years now um, but this is a technique where you place the placemat uh, or lace onto the paper and you coffee dye it and it leaves a beautiful impression onto your paper again though it's it's a little bit hit and miss and um, can also be a little bit messy again depending as well on the way in which you dry your papers so I came up with a slightly quicker way of doing it which again I'm going to use on the back of some of my digital kits um, pages that I printed off ready for my royal journal because it's something that's really quick and easy to do so what I've done is I've created this folder which is uh, photocopies um, make photocopies for pages and this is the masters so when you keep something as an original that you can then keep reusing that's called a master so um, in here I have got some um, coffee dyed papers that I've made myself with lace that I'm keeping as a master that I will then add to the photocopier and just print them off um, which will save me an awful lot of time <laughs> trying to uh, recreate the effect using coffee and paper and putting them in the oven. So I'll just photocopy them. Um, and here's one that I created with a doily. So how do we go about doing that with lace? Well, 
the thing is i started having a go with the lace which i'll show you in a second but then i started thinking about all the other things that are not copyrighted because one of the things we do have to be careful of is the copyright situation because you're not allowed to do um photocopies of say edith holden's uh, book pages and stuff like that but we do have an awful lot in our possession of stuff that isn't copyrighted paper doilies as a for instance lace as another now the design itself might be copyrighted but maybe only in the terms of you can't reproduce that as a lace and then sell the lace um so what i did was i took some of my coffee dyed papers and i added lace to them um, so what I've done is I've just attached it on the back and then I photocopied these and I'll show you the results in a second. So this is a very, very wide lace that I've got and I've placed it down the centre, but I've also placed it across um, lengthways as well. Uh, that's the paper, paper doily one of which, where's that copy gone? Oh, maybe it's in my next pile. So um, I coffee dyed a paper doily and then I've just adhered it to a piece of coffee dyed paper. So I'll show you. There it is, look. I'll show you what you can create. So this is a photocopy of that. So then I also got to thinking about other things, as I say, and this was a piece of embossed coffee dyed paper. And this was the debossed version so in in other words the one that's indented so that's how that sort of printed out but then i turned this the other way around or was it that way no i did that way first i beg your pardon that way was the embossed which is the raised side and then i turned it the other way around that was it and this is the debossed side and that's how this one came out so you can see there's an awful lot of difference not only in the color because of the color of the coffee dyed paper originally but the effect comes out differently as well so that was another one that if you want to make a nice quick background maybe for the back of a journaling card or the background of a tag that's ideal and it saves you having to keep embossing your paper all the time this let me just get the originals out and then you can compare so that was the coffee dyed paper with the piece of lace that i put on and that's the copy of it okay so if you imagine that as a journal page that would be quite pretty wouldn't it that's the big lace that as i say i also did it sort of lengthways and that's what that looks like and again if i fold that in half how pretty does that look as a bit of a background for a journal page and then this is the copy of this one and again if you fold that in half doesn't that make a really lovely page so then i got to looking at all my other laces because i thought there's quite a few in my lace collection that i actually don't want to use uh, i did chop into this one and i so regret it and it's a beautiful piece of of crocheted um lace and so i thought i oh, know i'll just copy copy it so i placed it on top of a piece of coffee dyed paper did a copy of it and look at that love it so i'm going to be looking at all my laces and placing them on the coffee dyed paper and seeing about photocopying them you could even take photographs of them and then print off the photographs of them if that's easier for you then i looked at corrugated cardboard so again this would be easy to rip into for collages now this you know when you go into the bathroom in a public toilet or somewhere um you go and wa wash your hands and they have these paper towels to dry your hands on so i got some of these actually when i was in america <laughs> 
brought them all the way back to the UK. But again, I photocopied it. So there's no copyright on that. So I photocopied it. And again, this would make good collage fodder of being able to rip that up. So the last piece that I wanted to try was I've got this really pretty beaded lace. And what I was thinking of doing was I will actually cut this out a lot better. Um, but just to give you an idea. So I thought about putting a piece there. And then putting the other piece up here. And then photocopying. Sorry, I don't know whether you can see that. Let me move those papers out of the way. There we go. And then have a go at photocopying that and then keeping that as a master. But it means, because this is the only bit of this lace that I've got, so it means that I'm not getting rid of it, I'm not using it up, um, but I'm creating something really pretty on a page. So it'll be interesting to see how that one photocopies. So if you bear with me, I'm going to go off and go and copy it and then we'll, I'll come back and show you. So here we go, this was the piece that I've glued those lacy pieces onto and this is how the copy turned out. So that, that turned out quite pretty in the end. My absolute favourite I think has to be this one, um, photocopying this crochet doily. Um, so I'm going to have a play about with, with doing that a little bit more. And then of course, as I say, We've got um, more lace copies and we've got the coffee dyed and the spray dyed wallpaper patterns. And of course, don't forget, as I say, have a look at other materials that you've got in your stash that aren't copyrighted, that are free for you to use. Um, but again, this would make a nice writing page as well. So using the lines to write on. Um, so have a look through your stash, see what you've got. Um, have a little play and experiment. I'm sure that there's a whole variety of things that you could think about utilising and then have a go at doing this wallpaper technique as well because it really creates some really pretty papers. Um, so that's my Tuesday techniques for this week. I hope that you'll go away and go and have a little bit of your own play um, and see what you can come up with. And I hope that you've enjoyed the video and will give me a thumbs up and maybe share it with your friends for them to come and have a look um, so that they can have a go at it too. And I'll see you all in the next video really soon. Thanks for joining me again. Bye for now. Bye. Bye.